So summation notation is a useful way to represent a sum of numbers. Okay. So if you watched the last video and you looked at sequences, we looked at how to add up a whole bunch of um, terms in an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence. And here we're going to find a nice, concise way to write that. Okay. And the way that we write that is with capital sigma. So this is also called sigma notation. Okay. Now the lower, what goes uh, in each part, there's kind of three parts to this. Down here, this is your lower bound. Okay. So I might write something like i equals 1. This is the number that you're going to start at. Okay. Typically, you'll start at i equals 1 or i equals 0, um, but there certainly are exceptions. The upper bound goes on top. So let's say I want to go from 1 to 3. Okay. Uh, this is the number you're going to stop at, where what you're going to do is you're going to increment by 1, you know, unless it explicitly tells you otherwise, but it generally will not. You'll do, but do it by 1. Um, and then in here is going to be your function that you're going to be adding up. So let's say I have a function that is 3k, a uh, 3i. So what does this mean? Here's what this means. Starting with the lower bound, plug in the number into here, and then increase this number by 1, check if it matches the upper bound. And then you're going to plug it in here. If it matches the upper bound, you then stop, and if it doesn't, you keep going. So to show you what this looks like, I'm going to plug in 1. So I'm going to have 3 times 1 plus is 1, 3. OK, no, we haven't reached it yet. So let's go up by 1. So now I'm going to have 2. So I'm going to have 3 times 2. OK, 2 is still not the upper bound, so we're going to keep going. So now I'm going to do plus 3 times 3. Is 3 the upper bound? Yes. So I stop. I'm done. OK, so you're going to notice here how many terms do we have? Here you might say, oh, we have three terms. That's the same as the upper bound. Um, but if I have like 7 and uh, 9, right, you can't just look at the first term and see how many terms you're going to have. So the number of terms that you're going to have is going to be equal to the upper bound minus the lower bound plus 1. OK? And this is what summation notation is. It's just a concise way to write a sum of numbers. So then I can evaluate this, right? I can say, OK, we're going to have 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 3 is 18. And we're done. OK? So uh, summation notation is going to be a useful way to write sums of arithmetic and geometric series and uh, sequences. And this generates what's called a series. OK? Now, summation notation does have some really useful properties that you will want to know. Um, you can, you know, intuit or figure most of these out uh, just by thinking about it as a sum. But I'm going to be really explicit about spelling them out. So, if I have the sum from, let's say, i equals a to b of some function of i plus the sum from i equals b plus one to c of some uh, function of i, which has to be the same function, right? I can write this as the sum from i equals a to c, OK? Think about why. I'm adding up. I'm taking all the terms of f of i, and I'm doing, OK, a plus a plus 1 plus a plus 2 plus a plus 3 until I hit b. Then I just keep going. I say, OK, well, now let's do plus, right? This whole thing is a sum. So now we're doing plus this sum b plus 1 plus b plus 2 plus b plus 3 all the way up to c. So there's no reason we can't just go from a to c of f of i um, since this is what we're getting anyways, right? So to, to look at it as an example of it, if I have the sum from i equals 1 to 2 of, we'll just do a really easy one, of i plus the sum from 3 to 4 of i, should be i equals, what is this going to generate? This is going to give me 1 plus 2 for my first one, plus for my second one, 3 plus 4. Well, this is simply just going to be equal to the sum uh, from 1 to 4 of i, right? So that's what this first property um, is, is telling us here. Okay. So our second property <coughs> is uh, if I have the sum from i equals 1 to n, of a constant, right? So I'm just saying, let's say I have you know one to three of five. 
what you can do is you can just say, well, all I'm doing is there's no I in here, right? So what do I do? Well, if there's no I, I'm just adding this term a bunch of times in a row. So I'd have C plus C plus C plus C until my index reaches N and I stop. So this is just going to be equal to N times C. Okay. An example, if I said I had the sum from I equals 1 to 5, uh, let's actually do it to 3 just because it's faster, of 5, this is going to be equal to 5 plus 5 plus 5, right? This is just 5 times 3. Now remember, it won't always be from 1 to 3, so you can't always just do uh, this times this. If it's from 1 to n, sure, you can do n times c, but if it's from an arbitrary thing, so if we have instead, let's say from a to b, uh, then what you're doing is you're multiplying your constant by the number of terms that you're going to generate. So if we have the sum from i equals a to b of c, then this is going to be equal to c times b minus a plus 1, right? Because this is the number of terms in your expression, in your sum, your series. So that's our second property. Our third property is that I can pull constants out. So if I have the sum... Uh, from i equals 1 to n um, of, let's say, c times some function of i. Well, this c is just going to be multiplying every single one of my terms, right? If this is, let's just say this is i, to use the other example, I'm going to have c times 1 plus c times 2 plus c times 3 plus c times 4. Just like when you have a normal sum, you can just pull the c out, right? So this is just going to be c times the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of i, okay? And this one, you know, this doesn't have to be i. This could be for i equals a if you wanted it to be. Um, you can always just pull constants uh, that are multiplying a function. You can just pull them straight out of the sum, okay? So this is your third property. Your last property is the change of index. And this one, you want to make sure you, uh, you pay attention because this one can be a little bit less, cause some more confusion than, than the other ones. So if I have a summation, and let's say it starts with a lower bound of a and an upper bound of b, and I have some function of i. If I want to re-index this, okay, what that means is if I have something from 1 to n, like let's say 1 to 5, and I want to change it, instead of 1 to 5, I want to change it and start my sum at 3. Well, if I start my sum at 3, it's going to be problematic because now I'm going to have like a different set of terms that I'm adding together. So I have to adjust everything else accordingly to make sure I get the same thing. This is called re-indexing um, or a change of index. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, let's say I want to re-index this and I want to set it to a plus c. Okay, I'm going to have a plus c. I'm also going to add that much to my upper bound. So I'm going to have b plus c. Okay. And when we do this, when we add it here, we're going to subtract it from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my function of i, and everywhere I have an i, I want to replace it with i minus c. Okay. Now, there's no uh, restriction here on whether c is positive or negative. So if c is negative, that means that we're going to have minus a negative here and add it. But I'm just going to write it out really explicitly because I know it causes confusion. So let's say I, instead I'm re-indexing and saying a minus c. And up here, I'm going to do b minus c. Then I'm going to say inside my function, I'm going to have f of i plus c. Okay. So whatever you're doing to the bounds, you're going to do the opposite to the function. Because if you don't, you need to do the opposite to balance out the fact that if you're increasing here, well, we need to decrease the values that we're adding. If we're decreasing here, we need to increase the values that we're adding. Right. We want to make sure that we're actually summing the same terms, essentially. Um, and that's going to require us to uh, adjust everything accordingly. Okay. So. Let's look at a couple of examples just to really make sure we drive, we drive this home. Uh, let's say I want to simplify the following expression. Let's say I have the sum of i equals 3 to 7 of 2i plus 9, and this is being summed here, plus the sum from n equals 8 to 20 of 2n plus 9. How can I simplify this? Well, inside I have the same expression, but I have different variables. That, the fact that I have different variables doesn't matter. 
Because remember, this is just an index. It's not like a true variable variable. It's just counting. It's going, okay, check three. Okay, now we'll do four, now we'll do five. Same thing here. So I'm gonna add these together and I'm gonna just, you know, we notice that the bounds are not overlapping, right? I'm going from three to seven to eight to 20. So I'm really just going three to 20. And my expression inside is the same. This f of i is equal to this f of n. So I'm just gonna rewrite this as the sum from i equals three to 20 of, and I can use anything here, but I already wrote i here, so we'll just go with two i plus nine. Okay, so that's how I could simplify that and write it as one expression. Uh, let's look at another one. Let's say I have the sum from i equals two to 11 of i plus two. And I just do this so there's no ambiguity about what's being summed. Uh, plus the sum from, that was an ugly sigma, uh, i equals two to 11 of three x plus six. I guess this should be an x, huh? Okay. So here, my bounds are the same, but my functions are different. But remember, we can just add these. So I'm just going to say, all right, this is just going to be the sum from i equals 2 to 11 of, I'm gonna, and again, we have, we can add these things that are being indexed. So 3x plus, you know, i, I'm going to write 4i, and then plus 8. So that's going to be my sum there. Uh, similarly, you can kind of do a different thing here, where let's say I have the sum from n equals 1 to 12 of n squared minus the sum from n equals 1 to 4 of n squared. Here, I say, well, I'm summing from 1 to 12, but I'm taking out all the terms that go from 1 to 4, which leaves me with a sum from n equals 5 to 12 of n squared, okay? Uh, so that's some examples of how we could simplify some uh, sums of sums. Uh, and now let's look at some re-indexing problems. So suppose that I have this sum. Let's say it's i equals seven to 15 of two i plus three. Okay, and this whole thing is being summed here. And I want to change this to a lower index of 1, and let's also change it to a lower, in, uh, lower index of 10. So to make it a lower index of, of 1, I'm going to say, well, I'm starting with i equals 1. How do I get that? I subtract 6 from 7. So my upper bound needs to change by the same amount. So this is, this is supposed to be a 15, in case you can't tell, 15. So 15 minus 6 is going to be 9. And then what do I do to my stuff inside? Well, here, I subtract it. So inside, I'm going to add. So this is going to become 2 times i plus 6 plus 3. So what is this? This is going to be 2i plus, I'm going to have 12 plus 3 is going to be 15. So I'm going to write this as 2i plus 15. And we're good. Now let's say we want to re-index at 10. If I want to re-index at 10, I'm going to write it as the sum from i equals 10 to uh, what? Well, let's look. I went from 7 to 10, so I added 3. So 15, I'm going to have to add 3, and I go to 18. And again, I'm going to take my 2i plus 3, and I'm going to replace the i with, what did I do here? I added 3, so I'm going to do i minus 3 plus 3. So then this becomes the sum of 2i minus 6 plus 3. So then this is going to become the sum from i equals 10 to 18 of 2i minus 3. Okay, So that's how I would re-index uh, some, some sums. So with that, you have pretty much everything you need with summation notation. This is how you manipulate it, what it means, and some of the properties. So this is a good thing to consult if you're having any issues. Um, and just always look back at those four properties that we went over. They will be very helpful in helping you to simplify sums.